Hi friends, I'm tired of looking at that crocodile. Let's change it up. We'll go outside today. How about we sit right over there and have a talk? Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Ah, mucho mejor. Muy fresco. Ah, oh. Check under the tablecloth for black widow spiders. All clear today. Well... My nephew and his wife and eight-year-old son were visiting last week and we had a great time. Um, really enjoyed having them here and enjoyed going out and doing some touristy things that uh, I don't normally do. Um, in spite of the fact that I've had to do some doctoring while they were here and I want to talk to you about that today. Uh, but also to tell you that uh, my upcoming videos should be interesting. We did um, swimming with the dolphins in Hokotepec. We went to the uh, Guachamatones, Guachamatones <laughs> in uh, Teochitlan. And, um, well, you just saw the video last week of um, uh, the uh, prison, old prison at uh, Isla Mascala. Uh, oh, we went to the zoo in Guadalajara. So I've got a lot of editing to do. Uh, the Libertad Market in uh, Juan de Dios. Anyway, um, I'll get that stuff uh, edited. And uh, I think you'll find um, touristing around the area to be interesting. Oh, I wanted to tell you a little bit of something about the video that I'm editing for Swimming with the Dolphins, the Delfinos. Um, this is not just a place to swim with dolphins, it's a research facility. And uh, they don't normally let you take video and pictures in there. There's all over their website and signs all over the facility that uh, no pictures, no video. Because I have a YouTube channel and I uh, think that it's good for their business to let people know about it. Um, I was able to meet with one of the managers there and uh, interview him and uh, find out some more about the research that they do and their mission statement for the facility. Um, they do some good work, I believe, and they agreed to let me do some video and some pictures of swimming with the dolphins and other things that go on at the facility. So I think you're going to find that very interesting and um, I don't know if other YouTubers have been able to film it, but I have a good video for you I'm editing. I have so much editing to do that I may have to post videos more often than just every Sunday to be caught up here. So. Uh, subscribe and hit that bell so you know when uh, I post them because uh, I might post another one or two during the week. In spite of the fact that I was hauling them around and kind of ignoring some of my own physical issues, um, I want to talk a little bit about that today because I think you might be interested in it. Uh, I started having a pain. Um, started in the middle of my back and kind of radiating around here and I'm going and doing all these things and kind of ignoring it and early one morning it hit me right there really 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 sharp hard pain and of course I think I'm having a heart attack nobody else was up I drove myself to the hospital in San Antonio that's San Antonio Tlacapan. If you're new to my videos, that's in, on the north shore of Lake Chapala in uh, San Antonio Tlacapan um, on uh, Lake Chapala. Uh, 
Anyway, I go in and they take me immediately in and uh, hook me up to an EKG and decide that uh, there's nothing wrong. I got a really good heart physically. I think emotionally as well, but physically, that's what they tested. And uh, they took lots of x-rays from all different angles, I think five or six of them. And uh, looking at my lungs, because I told them that I've had a um, pulmonary nodule for years. It's never changed for 18 years since somebody discovered it. And no change there. Nothing wrong with the heart, nothing wrong with the lungs. So <sighs> the doctor finally decided that maybe I have a pinched nerve in the middle of my back. And he gave me some meds and um, a prescription for them. And I went on my way. Um, now, one of the things I want to tell you today is how much that cost at the hospital here in Mexico without any insurance. And I have a great comparison for you. Uh, about three months ago, I was in Arizona. And um, I was having some, uh, just a routine annual physical. And they took blood. And um, normally you go back in a day or two and the doctor discusses all of the parameters of your blood work with you, et cetera, et cetera. But a very unusual thing happened that evening. The laboratory called me and said, your potassium level is off the charts. It's 6.8 or something like that. And... Um, you need to go to the hospital right away. And I said, well, I'm 31 miles from the hospital. I'll go first thing in the morning. They said, no, you go right now. Well, of course, I checked with Dr. Google and uh, saw that uh, anything over three was a heart attack for your potassium level. Happens all the time. Phone again. Okay, where were we? Uh, of course, very unusual for the lab to call you and tell you go to the hospital immediately. And after checking on the uh, internet and finding out that, in fact, um, it, it, a, a level of six something for your potassium level in your blood was um, dangerous. So I went to the hospital immediately. And they took some blood and decided that my potassium level was something like 2.8 or something. So a uh, false alarm. I was in the hospital there for about an hour. Uh, here in San Antonio, Tlacopan, I was in the hospital for about an hour. And similar things, EKG. Uh, in uh, Arizona, they took my blood. Uh, here they took several x-rays. Um, here's the difference in the cost. Now, oh, and by the way, um, when I did get to my doctor in Arizona, he said... You know, it was a hot day. It's got to go from Patagonia to Nogales up to Green Valley. And the potassium is retained within the cell walls of the blood. And uh, with heat, the cell walls start to break down and the potassium can leach out into the, what is it, the serum? I into the other part of the blood. So that explains the alarming <laughs> uh, level of potassium in my blood. Anyway, false alarm. But uh, I have uh, Medicare and uh, Humana Advantage in the United States. The bill for about the same time and the same amount of services in the United States was $2,711. And my copay for that was $90. So it cost me $90, but the bill was $2,711, U.S. dollars. Here, I don't have insurance at that hospital in San Antonio. The bill for just about the same stuff was 149 US dollars. So there's a comparison for you. And that's why I say I can afford, for the most part, to be self-insured for things like this uh, in Mexico. Uh, I've done some other doctoring lately. As you know, if you've watched my videos, I've been having trouble with my shoulder. I, I slipped and fell on March 5th, and it's been a long recovery, but I've 
done some of my own exercises and whatever, and it's much, much better. I can actually sleep through the night um, in the last couple of weeks for the first time in several months since March. Um, but in going to the doctor for this pain, which I'll tell you what it really is in a minute, uh, my real doctor here, uh, not my, not the emergency doctor at the hospital, but my real doctor, um, said I should probably go and have some physical therapy on my shoulder. So I've been doing that. Uh, turns out what I really have, two days later, the lesions showed up. I don't have a pinched nerve. I have shingles. <laughs> it's extremely painful. Starts in the middle of my back, comes around here, right to here. Um, my nipple, <laughs> I have a breast. <laughs> I'm talking about a, like, a, like a lady's breast. It's never mind. Anyway, uh, that's what's going on. I have shingles and uh, it's much, much better after a few days of meds and I'm sure that it will pass. But in the meantime, I'm also doing physical therapy on my shoulder and I went and had an ultrasound today. Ultrasound and they took all kinds, I think like 20 pictures they are sending to my physical therapist, uh, 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 ultrasound pictures of my shoulder and my muscles. And apparently I have torn some tendons right in here that are hooked to my bicep. Anyway, the cost for the ultrasound today was 90 US dollars total, no insurance, $90. And the physical therapist, uh, I was there for about an hour and two guys worked on me, was uh, $35 total, no insurance, $35. Anyway, um, I just share that stuff with you because uh, for those of you who are Living here, you might be interested in that, but also those of you who are thinking of living here, um, medical uh, costs are, are reasonable. And I took a picture while I was sitting in the lobby waiting um, at the hospital today, so maybe you'd like to see how nice and clean and new the hospital at San Antonio Tlacopan is. Anyway, um, a couple other things I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, I got a comment that uh, my Spanish pronunciation is always wrong. <laughs> and I, 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 I don't disagree with that. And before I say what I'm going to say about that, I, I want you to know that I welcome criticism. I appreciate corrections so that I can learn. I have never had a Spanish lesson. I joke that all the Spanish I know, I learned from a guy who graduated only from the third grade in Mexico, which he probably speaks much better than a lot of people. Anyway, um, never had a lesson. I used to use this old excuse that uh, I didn't want to take lessons from someone who spoke Castilian Spanish from Spain. I wanted to not take lessons until I could hear the music of the Mexicans language. Well, that excuse is long gone and too old to use after being here 20 years. And of course, it is embarrassing for me to be criticized that after being here 20 years, I have extremely limited Spanish. Um, for those of you who don't live here yet but would like to, I think the takeaway from that is that you can live here <laughs> for all these years without very much Spanish at all. Um, I, I've had, I get comments. I say that because I get comments about, well, I could never live there. I don't speak Spanish or um, I, I, I need to learn Spanish before I get there. And let it be said that the more Spanish you know, the easier it is. And even beyond that, the more Spanish you understand, the greater appreciation you can have 
the greater understanding and appreciation you can have for the Mexican culture. And I think that's important and probably something that I miss. Although after 20 years, I get a lot of it by osmosis. I don't need the language, I think. Anyway, um, one of the criticisms was that I always say Tiangas instead of Tiangis. And uh, absolutely right. I do. I'm lazy. That's why I've never taken any Spanish lessons. I'm lazy and I can get away with it here. But uh, again, I, I, I appreciate corrections and, and, and um, don't hesitate to let me know when I'm really messing it up. <laughs> Tiangis, not Tiangas. And now um, I want to talk about uh, one of the things we did with the kids when they were here. Uh, we went and walked up and down the Malacan in Chiapala. <laughs> Chiapala. Not the Malacon, <laughs> the Malacan. And I'm probably still messing that up. Anyway, um, just let me finish up the I don't speak everything correctly. I don't speak everything correctly in English either, and I'm fairly well educated. <laughs> My kids, my own kids, um, are always giving me a bad time. One of them is partition and petition. I say, oh, I was going to uh, divide the room with a petition, and they give me a bad time about it. I understand the difference between petition and partition, but I'm too lazy to mess with it. <laughs> uh, you know, the bottom line is I just kind of like who I am, and I'm not really – overly concerned about how you may think I ought to be. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with me. <laughs> uh, here we are walking up and down the Malacon in no, Malacon. See, I did it again. Up and down in front of the water in Chapala. Enjoy. So we're walking the Chapala Malacan today and uh, it's been a while since I've been over here all of this green grass is fake it's astroturf doesn't seem to bother the pigeon looks really nice got my nephew and his wife and his son visiting us today Then on the Astro Turf Company. Wow, there's a lot of it. Mm. Cheaper than water in a gardener. Corn. Mm. My dad, when I was a young man, used to say I needed to open up a stand that sold corn like that. The other idea was that I should go to barber school just in case that going to college stuff didn't work out.
So many shoes for sale, it's like everybody's got feet or something. These are actually uh, slot machines. You can uh, win some money back out of them. Reminds me of a story in uh, Madrid, Spain. Sitting in a restaurant and there's a slot machine on the wall behind me. The lady's playing it. She got done, I thought I'd try it. He took uh, 25 pesetas, like a quarter. And um, I didn't read or speak or understand any Spanish at the time. This was like 40 years ago. And uh, I stepped up to it and put in my 25 peseta coin, punched a button, and uh, won another coin. Picked it up, put it back in, punched the same button, won it again. Third time I figured out that cambio meant coin return, change. <laughs> but I was a winner for the first two times. Buenas tardes, Frida. <laughs> Pretty good restaurants over there. Uh, used to be uh, all you could drink margaritas on some night. Don't know if they still do that. Excuse me? Hi, my name is Ramos. My name is Ramos. Your you name is something? Ramos. Do I need something? This necessita pasale. Gracias. Ah, sorry about that. <laughs> La Garza, Great Egret. Mira, vamos. Have you figured out who it is yet? Jesus <laughs> No, it's Jesus the fisherman. <laughs> Well, we made a full circle around the Malcon, and uh, this is Casa Branaf over here. It's a restaurant, but called Casa Branaf because the people who owned Branaf Airlines in the United States. It was one of their vacation homes. I've seen pictures where the water was clear up on this street from where it is now. The fishermen. This sort of goes on in front of my house every day.
City Hall. The whole facade of the church is built out of limestone. In uh, Spanish, they call it Cantera. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.